So here today, we are shooting snow geese in South Dakota with Jake Whiteman of Whiteman Outdoors. And we are absolutely hammering the snows and it feels so good to get under these pricks. Now, Jake has a lot of experience in snow goose hunting and I don't. He seems to kill a lot more birds than I ever have. I wanted to get him on this educational video to teach you guys some of what he knows. So when I was first getting into snow goose hunting, I didn't know how many snow goose decoys to get. I didn't know what kind of an e-collar to get. I didn't know anything. And so, Jake, how many decoys do people really need to get when they're going out and trying to kill snows? Two types of ways to hunt these, I guess. We either sit in a migrator spread, a uh, traffic rig, or you chase feeds. So if you're getting into this migrator traffic hunting, I mean, you want to typically have somewhere around 1,000 decoys. You're hunting a feed or something like that. I mean, 250, 300 decoys, that's plenty of decoys. So what do you think is easier for the guy just starting out, migrator or feed chasing? Nowadays, it's probably migrator hunting i mean there's a lot of people chasing feeds and stuff like that so if you're kind of behind the eight ball and don't really have many land hookups and stuff like that that it may be easier for you on your first year to try a little traffic and migrator hunting opposed to feed hunting and as far as i know you just essentially find where geese naturally fly through all the time so like natural flyways and you try to get under the major flight lines right yeah you can kind of do it one of two ways so yeah you look for a major flight line and take your chances there or sometimes people get up in the mass numbers of birds and maybe find yourself a couple of roosts or something like that and set up in a field in between a couple of roosts and sit there for several days and try it so that's kind of two ways to traffic hunt migrator hunt and then do you feel like obviously as you become more experienced in it and you make more money and you get older I feel like full bodies are the best way to go, but can people consistently kill them off of socks and silhouettes? Yeah, you know, um, my favorite sock is a headless sock. Absolutely, I've killed thousands and thousands of geese over socks. When you go to a full body, you just basically can't get no better than that, so uh, it takes all the guessing out of it, but socks absolutely 100% work. I just feel like there's so much money that's needed to be successful in snow goose hunting, but essentially you're saying it doesn't. You can just put more time into scouting and running around. Yeah, it all year depending too. If you have a dry year where you can drive in the fields and stuff, yeah, you can get off a little cheaper, but I guess you get a wet year, well, then you got four wheelers, sleds, tracks, all that stuff that's added expenses. But uh, I guess say it's a dry year, yeah, you get yourself three, 400 socks and get yourself a Fox Pro e-collar and a, uh, a rotary and maybe a couple clones you can get up and going for three thousand dollars thirty five hundred dollars you know you can uh, you can be chasing these things a little bit and then probably the last thing I have for you how much time do you think someone has to dedicate so like say you go out with your buddies and you're like let's go chase snows for a week let's take off work and go sometime in March or April how much time do you feel like it really takes someone coming to a new area to set up and really get on birds? Like how much time? Is it like a week, two weeks, three weeks? Yeah, you know, I don't, if you're if you're coming to a brand new area and you don't know nothing about it, I guess a week is nice because you got you got a couple scout days to kind of figure out where geese are at and uh, figure out what's going on in the area. And then for three, four days, five days, you know, you, you try to hunt those geese. You kind of need to take a week to do it because there's always a couple scout days in there that if you're only on a two, three day trip, you're gonna spend three quarters of your time scouting and you're gonna have very marginal hunting because you're gonna have to rush your hunt opposed to getting a good scout on and getting in a little bit better spot. And then what's your uh, what's your thoughts on jumping versus decoying? I am not a jump shooter at all, uh, <laughs> but I guess there is jump shooters out there. I like the decoy, I like to fool the bird, trick the bird, over decoys and kill them. Some people resort to jumping on the very smart adults, but I guess I'm not going to say a whole lot about it, but yeah, I'm 100% decoyer. You do really good at decoying and I'm having a lot of fun here. So you obviously know what you're doing. Thanks so much for coming on, having us out. We're going to have Jake on our podcast too, and we're actually going to have a YouTube video from these three to four awesome days of hunting. It's been really good. So be sure to check that out. Whiteman Outdoors.